how do we put this? Shadowlands Season 2 is, well, different. Because of this, there are some new mistakes that we see a lot of players making. I'm sure you've seen this thing by now, but do you really know how to play with it and play against it? In today's video, we're going to show you how the best players in the world use the new Shackles Trinket. And we're going to update you on the metagame, showing you how to use your cooldowns in Shadowlands Season 2, including clips from the most brutal arena game we've ever seen played. And if you want to play the metagame just like the pros, consider checking out Skill Capped. Look, we know Arena is super hard right now. You might be trying to climb rating, but are finding roadblocks along the way. We definitely know this struggle, and it is exactly why we focus all of our guides on directly improving your skill and rating in Arena. For as low as $4.99 a month, you can gain access to all of our world-class courses and commentaries. And on top of that, you will get an invite to the premium section of our Discord, including our Ask a Pro and Request a Macro section, where you can get answers to all of your PvP-related questions. With a money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose, so check out skillcap.com slash wow today. Let's start off by looking at a trinket that you definitely should be using. The newly added Gladiator Shackles trinket is essential to have for PvP. If you don't have one by now, it's pretty easy to get. All you have to do is pick up this quest from the PvP vendors, and then head to Corthia with a 5-man group to kill 20 players on the opposite faction. It's arguably the most meta-defining trinket in Shadowlands so far, possibly taking the crown from the Emblem trinkets last season. But how do you use it properly? These are several key mistakes players make, so let's break it down one by one. The first mistake players make is just throwing their shackles without any CC. Obviously, its effect can be dispelled by any healer, but there are plenty of abilities that can stop this channel. Any spell immunity like Cloak of Shadows or Greater Fade will deny it. Target dropping effects like Vanish and Shadow Meld will stop its cast. Ice Block and Bubble will remove it entirely, and spell deflectors like Spell Reflection, Grounding Totem, and Nether Ward will outright deny it. There are more effects than what we have listed here, but any spell that falls in one of these categories will counter the trinket. Note that in a recent hotfix, the channel effect was changed from a curse to a magic debuff, meaning it can no longer be dispelled by some DPS classes. Spell Reflection is a bit weird, since reflecting the initial cast will deny it entirely, but reflecting during the channel will reflect some damage and a portion of the healing absorption back to the channeler. Any CC on the channeling player will also instantly stop its effect, but will keep a portion of the debuff on the affected target. As you can see here, our mage has started a shackles cast on the demon hunter while the enemy shaman is CC'd with a stun. In the middle of the channel, the demon hunter uses imprison, which instantly stops its cast. But if you look at their debuffs, there is still a portion of healing absorption based on the first tick of the cast. What this means is that you should ideally look to use shackles when all enemy targets are locked down to prevent its removal with dispels, CC, or any of the spells we mentioned earlier. Here's an example of really good shackles usage, where cross CC will be utilized in order to prevent getting countered. Here, our Windwalker Warrior team has to dance around the potential counters from the enemy turbo. As we can see on our party frames, Paralysis is ready for our Monk and Stormbolt is nearly ready for our Warrior. On top of that, the enemy Warrior doesn't have Stormbolt or Intimidating Shout to deny our Shackles cast. As long as we line up Paralysis with Stormbolt, we should be able to get a clean shackle. Our team stays patient, waiting for the perfect moment to cross CC in order to use the trinket. With our shaman positioned far away, the shackles cast cannot be stopped, rotting the enemy shaman for huge damage during this kill setup. Although moments like this are hard to come by, cross CC is the absolute best way to use shackles in arena. There is one final way you can use your trinket which isn't as effective as cross CC but helps work around dispels. This involves chaining your maledicts together as a team, using one trinket to bait dispel, then channeling one or two more when dispel is on cooldown. Here our team has dropped the warrior critically low and our shadow priest has started channeling a shackles cast. This channel will be quickly dispelled by the enemy healer as you can tell by all the debuffs being removed from the warrior. But now with the enemy healer's dispel on cooldown, our rogue sees an opportunity to channel his, which is perfect since the warrior does not have reflect and currently has die by the sword, granting immunity to our rogue's melee attacks. Our rogue sends his shackles into the warrior while the spell is on cooldown, doing massive damage while absorbing all healing over time effects from the druid. This winds up being the game winning play as the warrior dies shortly after. So, just as a recap, ideally you should avoid using shackles when multiple stops are available. This either means cross CCing a team, or it can mean spending your trinkets one by one, baiting a dispel in order to get a fully channeled cast. 
The Shackles Trinket is one of many things adding to the lethality of Season 2, which leads us to our next mistake that we see so many players make, and that is being greedy with defensives. This is a problem throughout the entire arena ladder, where even rank 1 players sometimes fail to adapt to a high damage meta. Burst damage in Season 2 is so high that you absolutely cannot greed any defensive cooldown when the enemy team is popping their offensives. Against some classes like Windwalker Monks and Ret Paladins, you can die from 100 to 0 in nearly one global. Here we have a pretty standard situation from a Ret Paladin's perspective. We're going to quiz you. What buff does the Paladin have that should be a huge red flag for the enemy team? We will give you just a few seconds since you need to be quick to see this buff in Arena. The answer is Seraphim. This is something we've talked about in previous videos, but this is almost always the combo starter for Ret Burst. And if we look at our Paladin's cooldowns, Wings is ready, meaning that our Pally will be popping soon. Let's see how the enemy team reacts. Our Paladin gets a Wings proc, multiplying their damage by a huge amount. The enemy priest recognizes this and immediately presses Fade, which is a perfect reaction since it reduces all damage. Our player then turns his attention to the enemy Holy Paladin and uses Stun. This is a massive problem now for the enemy healer. They are now stunned by a Paladin who has Seraphim and a Wings proc. On top of that, the Holy Paladin doesn't even have Beacon on themselves to proc saved by the light. If anyone has been more dead in Arena, it's this Paladin, who needs to use Trinket or Bubble to escape the situation. Unfortunately, the Paladin tries to be greedy and sit the stun, and to nobody's surprise, they flop like a fish to our Ret Paladin's burst. This situation is not uncommon at all. Any Ret Paladin, regardless of rating, is able to do damage like this. You need to be ready as a team to stop it, and that means not being greedy whatsoever. Now, we're going to watch a game from the opposite perspective, as a similar spell cleave is able to effectively counter a Ret Paladin's damage. This is a nearly identical situation to our first game, as the enemy Ret Paladin has Seraphim and Wings while bursting into our healer in a stun. This time though, our team has an aggressively defensive reaction. Our Druid uses Bark Skin to negate some damage, our Shadow Priest is in the background casting a Shadow Mend on our healer, and our Mage is casting a Polymorph on the Ret to CC them as quickly as possible. Let's see what happens to our healer now that the entire team is not being defensively greedy. They live! And our mage continues to cast polymorphs on the Ret Paladin to completely shut down their damage. Eventually, our Shadow Priest even lands a Mind Control on the Paladin, shutting down even more of their cooldown. As you can see, despite playing against the same Ret Paladin, refusing to be greedy was the game-defining play for our team. All in all, due to the lethality of damage in Season 2, you need to be more aggressive with your defensive cooldown usage. Always assume more damage or more control is coming, and keep the Shackles Trinket in your mind as a possible threat whenever you are tanking damage. Damage. You know that expression, work smarter, not harder? That is how you should approach offensive cooldowns in Season 2. With Burst being as high as it is, and with the Shackles Trinket adding more kill power for every team, damage is becoming way more valuable than control. One mistake we see many players make is focusing too hard on trying to get perfect CC setups while ignoring their damage output. To illustrate this, let's first look at the most brutal game of 3v3 we have ever seen played. Trust us, this is going to get nasty. Pay attention to our mage and see how many casts they land in the first 20 seconds of the game. The first polymorph on the enemy warrior gets reflected and gets followed up with a storm bolt, all while a priest is getting brutally trained. Immediately after, the next cast is interrupted by an imprison from the demon hunter and the warrior immunes Nova with blade storm and fears the mage. Our mage will try and land a polymorph, but this gets shut down by a last second wind shear. Ring of Frost will be the attempted follow-up, but it gets immune with Fleshcraft by the Shaman. Let's pause and take a quick glance at the damage meter. We are 30 seconds into the game and our rank 1 mage has done less than 5,000 damage and has not landed a single cast of CC on the enemy team. Mind you, this is a rank 1 tournament player and by no means a bad mage, but what exactly is going wrong here? Even when we skip forward to the end of the game, our mage is only able to do 20k damage before the game ends, which is 150k less than the enemy demon hunter. What went wrong? To understand this, let's hear the communications of one of the highest rated teams in North America in the middle of a super long arena game. Trying to do too much, we just win with damage, I promise. Okay. Oh, we're mm. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, we're in. But that's why, it's because we're gonna trying to do so much. The team agrees they are simply trying to do too much. The whole game they were focusing on trying to set up perfect CC chains on the healer, all while they could have been focusing on just dealing more damage. Then Rookie mentions this in a recent AWC series, where he explains that setup based comps sometimes don't even need to set up CC, but instead just throw damage at the enemy team. Yeah, I mean, it, it really is interesting to see. I mean, even the setup based comps, like the uh, Shadow Priest Mage, 
um, sometimes it is good to go in, you need to get crowd control, but if you're being shut down over and over and over, you're effectively doing nothing because you're never doing your damage. So I, I like what Method's doing, just okay, whatever, just go for it. Many comps don't even need complicated setups to win games. Instead, simply lining up one or two instant CCs while bursting is enough to force major cooldowns. Take this example, where our druid and his shaman have both been put into instant cast ranged CCs, all while the enemy team pops some of their offensive cooldowns. This combination of burst with a 4 second CC is all it takes to force nearly every defensive cooldown from our shaman, even breaking his massive fleshcraft shield. With damage being disproportionately high, the winning strategy has shifted from long CC setups to more snappy cooldown usage. Short instant cast CCs are often enough to force major CDs or even land kills as long as they are paired with damage cooldowns. You should really keep this in mind in the first half of this season, since stamina and versatility values will be far behind damage numbers. The mistake to avoid is focusing entirely on the setup, and that's not to say control isn't important or that you should never try and cross CC, but with damage being so high, focusing only on control will really hold you back. And that wraps up our meta game update for early season two. Look, we know damage is super high right now, but you should use that to your advantage. Try finding small, shorter windows to burst, and we guarantee you start seeing more wins. And if you want to see more instructional material, be sure to check out Skillcapped, where we will be updating our courses and commentaries for season two. As always, though, thanks for watching. We hope to see you soon.